In today's video, we'll talk about the fundamentals of shutter speed. Did you ever wonder how professional photographers completely freeze a moving object in an image? How did the photographer manage to freeze that motorcycle in midair? Or stop the movement of runners? Or seagulls and crashing waves in this shot? Or capture that raindrop crown bounce off a surface? Or even stranger, how did they manage streaks out of headlights and taillights off traffic? Well, stay tuned, you're about to find out in today's video. Let's break down shutter speed into two parts, light exposure and motion control. So let's begin and go over the first part, light exposure. How does shutter speed help with varying brightness in a photograph? Here's a little 8 inch table fan I have at home. I took some pictures off it to explain the concept. If underexposed, the image is dark and the fan is barely visible. If it's overexposed, it's way too bright. The desired exposure makes the fan look natural. Listen carefully. 1 25th of a second, 1 50th of a second, 1 hundredth of a second, 1 two hundredth of a second. 1 400th of a second and 1 600th of a second. Did you notice the click for open and close clicking closer together in time? Great, so along with seeing the difference in image brightness, you heard it too. If you hear compared to, you know picture 1 was shot for a longer time compared to picture 6. Okay, fundamentally, what actually made the image darker? Photons. In theory, photons are these tiny particles light is made up of. Think of them as very, very tiny ping pong balls. Just think of them as something that carry energy. As more and more photons are collected in your camera's sensor, more and more energy gets absorbed. This energy absorbed makes the image brighter. Shutter speed helps control how many of these photons you collect by creating a shutter to start and stop the collection process. The faster your shutter speed gets, images start to get darker as you collect less and less of these photons. Okay, let's make this a little more interesting and dive into the second part of the video to learn motion control. Here are some birds flying across a lake. Before you ask me where the birds are headed, I really don't know. Maybe one of them started doing yoga and freaked the other ones out. Whatever the reason, it's not important. What's important is these pictures were shot very close together in time. I just stitched all the images together in sequence to make it look like a video. By the way, the camera I used shoots almost 9 frames in 1 second. Jesus! Yes? Oh, I, I didn't know you subscribed. Wanna hear how cool the camera shutter sounds? There's a reason behind why I showed you this video. The reason was because we're gonna make a video of our own, but this time an animation with a soccer ball. Remember that ball that was frozen in mid-air in the intro of this video? For explanation and simplicity, we'll represent the soccer ball using a gray circle. What we'll do is take this soccer ball with multiple sequential images, and then take photographs of our own video creation. I want the video to start with the ball at position A on the left and then end with the ball to the right at position B. But how many images should we use for the video? Or you can say, how many frames do we use? Let's use three frames. So here's the first frame, second, and third. Just like a projector in a movie theater that takes a film strip with still frames and plays them in sequence one after another to make a movie out of it, We'll take our three frames and add them to a film strip in sequence. Just like that. And we're ready to roll. Sure, you can grab popcorn. Action. Here it is. But you can clearly see the three images in sequence. Doesn't seem much like a movie. Can we make the motion look smoother? Of course. Let's double the number of frames. Here's the result. But can we do even better? Sure can. Let's use 30 frames instead of 6. All right, now it's starting to look like a real movie. Okay, the movie we just made had 30 frames and it was two seconds long. If we do some basic math, we can figure out how long in time each frame was. Since every frame in the movie showed up for an equal amount of time, we have two seconds divided by 30 frames. That's 1 15th of a second for every frame. 
Each frame is 1 15th of a second long. Now let's take a photograph of our animation at 1 15th of a second shutter speed. Here it is, nice and sharp. But how come it wasn't blurry as it was moving when I took the photograph? The reason for that was because I set my shutter speed at 1 15th of a second. So when I took that photograph, I only grabbed one of the frames in the film strip. But which one? Doesn't really matter. Let's pick frame number 13. So within that frame, the ball doesn't move, so the photograph is sharp. It's pretty much equivalent to taking the film strip and cutting it with a scissor for a duration of 1 15th of a second, and you'll get that particular frame. Okay, but what if I took the picture of the movie roughly two times slower than 1 15th of a second, which is roughly 1 8th of a second? Here it is. Is it different than the last photograph? Yes, it is. The top photograph is the one with two frames shot at 1 8th of a second, starting to look a bit stretched out. Let's keep going and take a picture that's another four times slower, which is roughly only half a second, eight frames in one photograph. Even blurrier, starting to see a streak almost, right? As the shutter speed is being reduced in the upward direction, pictures are starting to get blurrier and show a streak type of behavior. It's because we started capturing or cut out more and more of these frames into a single shot. This is how photographers use shutter speed to either freeze an object, like the motorcycle in midair, or runners in a triathlon, or even cooler, get those streaks in images like the headlights and taillights of traffic on the Golden Gate Bridge. A quick point, how come our eyes don't see streaks forever like in a photograph? That's because our eyes and brain can only retain about 10 to 13 images in one second which is roughly 1 15th of a second of retention time, unlike a camera that saves the frames forever using a digital sensor or film. So moving objects fade away in that short time. But one thing I didn't mention yet is that instead of going slower with shutter speed, what if I went faster than 1 15th of a second? Let's say 2 times faster at 1 30th of a second, which is equivalent to cutting half a frame out. Well, it would make no difference in the motion of the ball as it's not moving within that frame, as shown here at the bottom. But wait, since we're going faster and faster with shutter speed, does it not make any other difference in the photograph? Yes, it does, in light exposure. Remember how for faster shutter speeds, the photograph of the fan kept getting darker and darker? That's what happens. Photons carry energy that gets absorbed by your camera's sensor. Each frame roughly has the same number of photons, unless the brightness of individual frames change drastically. So for example, if one frame had 8 photons, two frames would have 16, or half a frame would only have 4. So lesser the photons, lesser the energy or brightness. When dealing with photons, you're rarely dealing with just a few, like in our example. That was merely drawn to explain the concept. To get a reality check, a 100 watt light bulb at home emits about 300 million, million, million photons, and that's just in one second. Amazing, right? So in general, you'll never be down to just a few photons in everyday photography. So you see, all along, different shutter speeds helped control exposure to light and motion and were working in sync. Remember I told you the answer of motion control is in the rotating blades of this fan? If you looked at picture 6 carefully, made brighter here and larger so you can see clearly. Comparing picture 2 to 6, you can now actually count the blades. That's the magic of shutter speed. So there you go, you just learned all about shutter speeds. And it turns out the two parts of shutter speed, light exposure and motion control, were linked together all along for you to take that perfect shot. Thanks for watching this learnability video. Keep on learning!